videos exist on YouTube about this tank, King Tiger 213 from Camp Cooper Piper and how it came to be here in La Glaze. But most of those aren't the full story. account of how King Tiger 213 came to rest here in La Glaze and the battles that it fought here in December 1944. In the early hours of the 20th of December 1944, Piper would send a small detachment down from La Glaze to Coup in order to try and secure the road to La Glaze. The detachment itself consisted of one King Tiger, one Panzer IV and one SD KFZ 234 or Puma armoured reconnaissance car. The King Tiger was number 221, commanded by Untersturmführer Georg Hantusch. And it was at this position here, at the Marischal Mill, that they formed their blocking group. So it was later on, on the 20th of December, that an armoured column from Task Force Lovelady that was made up from the US 3rd Armoured Division approached the positions here at the Marischal Mill. The US column got to within about 600 metres of the Germans' positions. One of the Germans in the battle group suggested that the King Tiger take out the lead element of the US armoured column and then they could engage the rest of them. It was at this point that Untersturmführer Georg Hantusch refused and said, fire uphill. I'm not tired of living and I've only got three centimetres of armour on top. It was as the US 3rd Armoured Division and the 30th Infantry Division started to close in on Piper's positions around the glaze and the surrounding area that it was decided that the ad hoc battle group that had come to Marischal Mill here would then pull back to La Glaze. Untersturmführer Hantusch's Tiger 221 would then go to the Vermont farm and reinforce King Tiger 213 and their position overlooking the approaches to La Glaze from there. determined by Piper's men that the Vermont farm behind me was the ideal location to site Tiger 213. The Vermont farm sits on a hill at about 400 metres above sea level and has commanding views to the north-south road from Trois Pont. So after Untersturmführer Georg Hantusch was ordered back from the Marischal Mill, he was ordered to come here to Vermont farm. It was at this location that his Tiger 221 would take up positions along with Tiger 213 to defend the approaches to La Glaze from the 21st of December and into the 22nd of December. The Obersturmführer Helmut Dollinger and Untersturmführer Georg Hantusch with Tigers 213 and 221 would maintain a, a look out toward the east down the Amblev Valley for approaching Americans. At 1400 hours on the 22nd of December, after a preparatory artillery barrage, Task Force McGeorge would move south from Roanne down toward La Glaze. The powerful column from I Company of the 33rd Armoured Regiment of the US 3rd Armoured Division on their advance would lose two Shermans to German mines. Upon seeing this advance, Tigers 221 and 213 moved into position ready to engage the Americans. So occupying the high ground of the Veramont farm overlooking to the ridgeline and the valley behind me, the Germans had the perfect firing positions and had the potential to get the perfect drop on the American armoured column. But as they started to open fire, they struggled to hit any of the Shermans. It was at this moment 
that unexpectedly the Shermans formed a line and then started to shell the Veramont farm and Tigers 221 and 213 with HE rounds. So at the time of the shelling by the US Shermans over on the far ridge line, Unterschar Führer Rolf Erhardt was actually in the Veramont farm itself and started to witness this battle take place. At that moment, rounds started slamming into the farm building itself and he was forced down into the basement of the farm building to take cover. Both King Tigers on the hill here at Veramont Farm kept up a heavy shelling onto the American positions, but the American weight of fire was greater and it was at this point that Tiger 221 had been hit by several HE rounds, which had started to disable parts of its firing mechanism. So another round hit the cupola where Hantush was commanding the vehicle from wounding him, forcing him and his crew to bail out and abandon Tiger 221. So after abandoning Tiger 221, Hantush made his way into the cellar and he was shortly followed by Dollinger from Tiger 213. It transpired that one round had hit the tank and severed off the front one third of the main gun barrel from his Tiger. Not all of the Shermans from Task Force McGeorge got away unscathed from the engagement. Obersturmfuhrer Christ in Panther 201 from the village of La Glaze itself who was able to engage and destroy two of them. So it was from the Veramont farm behind me that Dollinger and Hantush and their respective crews would make their way back into the village of La Glaze to receive medical treatment before eventually evacuating with the rest of Piper's force here. Tigers 221 and 213 would remain here at the Veramont farm until the summer of 1945. After that point, they were both recovered by the US Army as they started to clean up the battlefield here. So looking at Tiger 213 today, we can clearly see that the gun barrel is in the recoil position and it's locked back there. Now this was likely done by the men of Kampfgruppe Piper before they abandoned the village in order to prevent the Americans from taking this vehicle and then either using it or taking it back for trials and evaluation. What they would have done was drain the hydraulic fluid in the recoil mechanism, then put one round into the breech and fired it off. This would then lock the gun barrel in the recoil position and then preventing it from firing again. The reason I suspect that this was done by the men of Kampfgruppe Piper rather than the Americans themselves is A, the Americans would have no reason to do this, whereas Piper's men would, and also the American engineers had the habit of unscrewing the muzzle brake off of the end of the gun barrel to notify other American troops that that tank was decommissioned, it was out of action, and that it was safe to advance past. So in the summer of 1945, when the war was over, the Americans were in this area clearing up the battlefield and there was a lot of armoured vehicles to clean up from Kampfgruppe Piper's fight here in December 1944. And Tiger 213 was one of those. Now, as the Americans were starting to tow the tank out of the village, one of the locals, a Madame Jenny DeVay, approached the American soldiers and offered to buy the tank and it exchanged hands for the pricely sum of one bottle of cognac. Now, Tiger 213 has resided in La Glaze ever since the end of World War II. And in the 1970s, it underwent a thorough restoration process, which included the front one third of the gun barrel being re-welded to the main body of the tank itself. Since then, the tank has remained here, right next to um, La Glaze Church, and also behind us, the excellent December 44 Museum. It now features as the prime attraction for tourists in this area, and if you haven't visited La Glaze, highly recommend coming here, visiting the museum, and spending some time taking in what is arguably one of the most impressive vehicles of the Second World War.